Welcome to this preview video of assignment three in text processing and analysis. For assignment three, the instructions say, find two texts that are each about 500 words in length. If needed, you should cut out some words in order to create texts that are about 500 words in length. The closer to 500, the better. So that when you compare frequency counts of these three linguistic features that we'll see in a second, um, they're more comparable. They're, they're closer to um, reality on being able to compare between the two texts. So the closer to 500, the better. And if you have to cut some stuff out, then you should do so. And try to get um, a text, one text that's more formal and the other text should be less formal. All right, so purposely do that. Try and find two texts that are, that are very different in level of formality. Create a Python program that produces counts for the number of three linguistic features. Subject pronouns. Subject pronouns are I, you, she, he, we, they. Those are the standard subject pronouns in English. If you like to use some, if you also like to search for less formal, um, kind of less standard in a way, subject pronouns you sure can like you guys, y'all, yous. Um, if you like to, you can do that as well. The second linguistic feature are contractions. For example, can't, I'd, will, like will go, we will go. John's coming, the, that apostrophe S is a contraction, right, of is, John is coming, John's coming. You sh I should point out right away that that apostrophe S can also represent a possessive S, like John's book, where in that case, in John's book, that apostrophe S does not represent is, so it's not a contraction. And the third linguistic feature are modal verbs. That is uh, verbs that help other verbs like can, might, must, could, should, would, will, right? They're verbs that are next to other verbs and they kind of quote unquote help them. So for example, like I might see my dad during Christmas break. So might is helping see, I might see my dad. Um, I could go if I had time, but I don't have time. So could is helping go. I could go, right? Or I can speak some Portuguese, can't help me speak, et cetera. So that's what modal verbs are. Okay, so you're simply, all you're, you're trying to get are just counts, just number of these three linguistic features in each of the two texts. So in the end, you'll have six counts, right? Three linguistic features per text. You have two texts. So you need a one count subject pronouns in the formal text, a second count for subject pronouns in the informal text, a third count for contractions in the formal text, a fourth count for contractions in the informal, and then modal verbs in the formal and informal. So six counts in total. You should check the precision and recall of your program's ability to correctly find these three linguistic features. And like I mentioned with the possessive S, the apostrophe S that is possessive, not contracted uh, S. Um, if you have some possessive S, S's in there, your precision will go down, right? Because those will be false positives. So if you need to review how to measure um, precision recall, it's less than 3.2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, less than 3.2 is where I present um, how you can measure accuracy of your searches, precision recall. If you need to review that lesson, you can, you should do so. And, um, to find these three linguistic features, you need to use regexes, regular expressions, right? So you need to create a regex that searches for these subject pronouns. You'll probably need to use the pipe operator to separate options in your regex. If you need to review lesson 3.1, where I present regexes, regular expressions, you should do so, okay? And um, all right, let's take, keep going here. You can simply paste in the text into your py file. You don't have to try to do file uh, input at this point. You, sh you can just simply paste them into the, the py file. Now, if you have experience with programming and you would like to do file input, like read in a file from a text file, read in the text from a text file, for example, 
and you know how to do that, go for it, challenge yourself, push yourself. Um, but if you don't know how to do that, then you can simply paste in the text into your PY file. And you should interpret the results in about 100 to 200 words. So when you have the six counts, you should compare the two texts, the more formal text and the less formal text, and say, okay, it looks like I have, you know, see what you have, see if you have more subject pronouns in the informal text. Why would that be? Just speculate, just kind of guess on why that might be the case um, for each of those three linguistic features. And then you turn into the CMS, a zipped file with the extension zip with your py file right your python script that does the work as well as your docx microsoft word document that has your interpretation of the results right and you, where you describe any differences between the texts based on those three linguistic features the counts of those three linguistic features and then also in that docx you should report the precision recall of your program because these are such short um, texts you can just do all of them just count up manually how many it should have gotten, how many it got, how many of what it got is correct. You know, again, if you need to review how to measure accuracy, it's in less than 3.2. Okay, and let me just show you a quick example, uh, kind of a skeleton of how I would approach this if I were a student. I'd have a little doc string just describing what um, the script is. I would import RE, the RE module. I would simply paste in my text right into my PY file, right? Your more formal one and your less formal one right in there. And then you should not repeat yourself. You should not copy and paste big chunks of code. Um, rather, you should put that big chunk of code into either a for loop or into a function definition. If you need to review how to do for loops, um, that was in lesson 3.3. If you need to review how to define functions, that was in lesson 4.1, okay? So the idea is that you just paste in your text, your two texts into two different variables, right? And with the option A here, if you wanted to go into a for loop, you could put those two texts into a list like I do on line 15 here, right? Put them into a list and then just loop over that list and put it into a for loop. And then just get the number of subject pronouns, get the number of contractions, get the number of modal verbs, et cetera. Um, and have just do that for each of the two texts. Printing out, right? Printing out um, to the screen so you can see what's, what's happening. So you can see the numbers. <clears throat> and the way, I think the easiest way to get the number of each of those three linguistic features is to use the re.findall function. The re.findall re function returns a list with um, matches of the regex, the regular expression uh, that has all the matches in the list. And then you can simply call the len function on that list to give you the number of matches. And then here, right, you put in your um, regex and the current text. So in this case, it would be T, would be the text you're searching in because the T variable is holding the current text, whether it's the text formal or the text informal, right? Um, so you'd probably use something like this on line 20 to, for each of these linguistic features. The other option to not repeat yourself, importantly, it's, it's important to not repeat yourself. So you can do that by either using a for loop to have the majority of the code in a for loop, or you could put the, the block, the majority of the, the code into a function like I do here on line 23. Again, if you need to review less than 4.1 on um, defining functions, you should do so. Put it into a function where you just pass in the input text and have it go through that text and give you the number of uh, subject pronouns, contractions, and modal verbs. Again, using this re.find function and passing that into len is probably the easiest way to get the number of a regex in the text. And then you return back out the information um, to the point in the script where the function is called. So after you define it, right, on lines 23 to, to uh, 27, I have a little pseudocode just to show, or actually 28, a little pseudocode of how I would define it. And then you actually need to call it, right? Call it and print it out to the screen. So you can see the results here, right? So this is like just a little bit of pseudocode, just kind of a skeleton version of what 
I would do if I were a student, um, either one, either a for loop or defining a function and calling it twice would be totally fine. Do not repeat yourself. Okay. And just once again, the, the closer to 500 words you can make each text by cutting stuff out if you need to, um, the better. So that the numbers that you compare between the two texts are comparable. We'll see in a future lesson in lesson 5.3 how to normalize text down to a base number. But for now, just try and get the number of words in each text to 500 as best you can. Okay, so that is a little uh, preview or kind of uh, tips I would uh, use if I were a student doing this homework assignment. All right, as always, I'm super happy to help. And um, the TA is very happy to help. So come into our office hours if you need. If you can't make um, and you can't make it into the office hour time, then just let me know. I can set up uh, set up an appointment for another time. Okay, best of luck. See you next time.